Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back to the show. Terry Matt's joining us here today as an intuitive, as an animal communicator, as a friend. Uh, again, Terry Matt is her name, also better known for those. Uh, Terry Pathic, she gets the perfect name for you. And it's T E R R I E P A T H I C dot com. That's also her website. She's also a Reiki master. There's a lot to her. Let me have her introduce herself. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I- um, yeah, I do animal communication and I also do um, Reiki healing and I do some sound, sound therapy also, which is part of my journey. Um, but I wanted to talk to you today about reincarnation and, and the experiences that I've had over the years with different clients and animals that have crossed over and now are re- reunited um, with their owners, because they do have an option of coming back. And um, for those of you who uh, don't really know what reincarnation means, it, it's it's a living being that had um, chosen to come back after into another physical form after their previous body had um, is no longer. So we all are living beings and lights and um Animals can reincarnate just like humans can. Um, so yeah, that's that's uh, part of what I do is uh, not only just reading their current animals and body, but also any spirits that have crossed over and want to be reunited. Right. And I know today that's our focus, uh, eternal connection, right? Better known as reincarnation. And share yeah. that concept with some people. They might say, what does it mean to be reincarnated? How does it work? Give us the, the background to it, and then we'll definitely get into more details. Yeah, for sure. So we are, are we'll all, we are all living beings. And when we cross over into spirit, um, we do have the option of, of whether or not we come back on earth through contract. Um, and, and what that means is behind the scenes, our souls will contract with each other for learning purposes to enhance our growth here on earth. And animals play a part in that. So when an animal is drawn to you and you're drawn to the animal, the, the journey that is on earth is just much more than just you're here as my companion. There, there's much more to it than that. And when you can review or even think back to past pets and even past animals that you've had and how they taught you something, whether it's you work all the time and they're nudging you to go out and play with them, um, they're teaching you to enjoy life at the same time you're working. Um, It could be that you've never experienced unconditional love. So They are here to, no matter what kind of environment they've had to go through, um, they still show love. They don't show any kind of resentment or um, anger towards anything that happened in their life. Um, But when they're here to teach you something and on the soul side have a contract and want to come back to you in your life, They're there for a reason. They're there to help you grow. They're there to learn also on a spiritual level. So they, they take over another body when they come back. Um, And whether it it can be a dog, it can be a cat, it can be a horse. They, they don't have to necessarily stay the same animal type of animal. They can change if they like to, but a lot of times they will come back to what they know that their owner likes. So, um, well, let me just also ask when you talk about reincarnating. So say if we're a dog, we're a cat. Do we go back into the same body or we can go into a different form? You can go into a different form. So I've I've already had a, a dog that went into a cat and vice versa. It's, you know, a lot of times um, there's a couple things that make them change. And part of it is if they didn't like something about their current body that when they were in body, like say for instance, um, a cat is very art, you know, they can jump and uh, go places that a dog normally can't. So if they see that in that lifetime and say, wow, I wonder what it would be like 
they could come back as a cat if that's what they choose to do. Um, and sometimes they, they, they change and become from a domestic to a wild animal, knowing that in a wild, a lot of times they're there for food. They're there to complete the circle of life. Um, and they might not like that after one lifetime of that. So then they come, they become a domestic again. So it depends on what their spiritual journey is and what they're supposed to learn. It's, that's what it's about, right? Every time you get to the earth, we call this earth, right? I mean, we, we're on a different, we're trying to learn something each and every time. And is that why, like, I feel like there's something in my life personally that I feel like I always am trying to overcome and I can never overcome it. And that's why I'm 45 and single. I always, I'm just going to be honest with you. And I feel like I, I just couldn't understand this. I just feel like I have my whole, I have two little boys beautiful. I've always, always, always people that I date, they're always jealous. And then people will say, what's wrong with you? But I'm like, I feel like this is what God sent me here to overcome something with jealousy or people with jealousy and how to handle them. Because I just keep getting my whole life. I've been in this. My father was a super jealous person to my mother. And in every relationship I'm in, it's the same pattern. Why? I'm like, there's got to be a reason. And people say, well, maybe it's you. I'm like, but I'm not jealous at all. So well, why am I attracting this? I, I think it's a heavenly, it's something up above telling me maybe in a past life, I was what? I was the jealous one. And now it's well, like, or like, you know, what, what is that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes we do relive cords. Like we bring, if you have a fear about something in this lifetime, it's most likely from something from a previous life. And those cords just keep coming forward until you resolve them. So there, there are ways that you can cut those cords so that they don't follow you through to another lifetime or cut your cord that, so you can continue your life here. But yeah, there's, there's deeper things also as you dive into your little girl, your, you know, different things that happened in your past as you're being right now that could contribute to that, that you're attracting that. And it's, it's, you know, you say it, it's very much like your father. So, you know, we are drawn to, we, we, we drive towards one of our parents as far as we, we want more of their love than the other parent. And when you understand that relationship and understand that there's more to it, why is that desire there? Why do I have that longing? So yeah, it gets into what's your purpose here in life, but also what, uh, what are you bringing forward and what do you have to resolve in a past life or as when you were younger? There's, there's situations that you might have been in that you have to resolve or understand and then continue the heal and process and release it. Okay. Sorry to bring that up. Back to reincarnation, no, but that's I'm just okay. thinking. So, <laughs> <laughs> Always end up asking questions. But yeah, there's there's different situations for everything, but in you know, it's it's about diving back into and figuring it out. And there are ways to cut cords. Um as far as, you know, asking your angels to cut them for you and, and any kind of fear, like, you know, we are getting off the subject, but just to give you an example, um, I never had a fear about going over a bridge, but I always had a fear of what would I do if I had to go over the bridge in my car? Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that in a past life, I actually passed from that. Like I went over the edge, over the edge of a bridge and passed. So when I cut that cord, um, I no longer even think about it. Mm -hmm. it it's this, it's the strangest thing. And then until you experience it, you know, it's real. Um, but it's, it's very freeing. It's very, um, the burden isn't there. It's lifted off of your chest and, um, yeah, it's just, you might want to dive into, you might want to dive into that a little bit further. So, all right, I will. All right. So back to reincarnation. What is the okay. next part All that right. we're supposed to be talking about? No. Sorry. All right. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a spiritual journey. So when, when an animal reincarnates, um, 
they're here to help you uh, get through your spiritual journey also. Um, and what I mean by that is, like for instance, we our German Shepherd, she, she reincarnated, she was my um, German Shepherd when I was little and she came back into my life. And a lot of times your animal will mirror you. And, um, and what I mean by that is, she, I have food allergies. She has food allergies. Um, she is so sensitive. I'm an empath and in animal form, she's an empath. She, her feelings get really hurt when she's not accepted if somebody doesn't love her. Um, it's just really amazing. Like the things that she is about was like my childhood. Wow. And that's exactly how I was. I was very sensitive. I felt everybody's pain and happiness. And she's exactly the same way. She's very intuitive, very in keen and everything. Um, but she is helping me and I'm helping her in learning how to um, continue like the sound therapy. She had, she had some, um, bone issues that her bones didn't grow in all four joints. And the um, vets didn't think that she would ever be able to really walk again because her limbs were just kind of hanging there with nothing keeping them in. So I researched it. And this is where I mean by they're here to help us grow because I researched and found tuning forks to help bone, you know, I researched all the statistics and 25% growth minimum in humans when used a, a specific hertz wow. or just bone therapy, you know, to, to grow bones and use that on, on Kira. Mm -hmm. And she walks to this day because of it. She's got three of her joints that have grown mm -hmm. back and her one is giving her a little bit of trouble, but um, I'll take three out of four, you know? So, but, uh, those are the things that they, even though they're going through a physical form to help us, it's, it's, she's, she's unconditionally giving her body to help me grow in, in what I'm supposed to do for, for animals. Um, and, and I do convert that over to humans too, because a lot of times the the owners need help as much as the, the animals do. So, um, but yeah, and Daisy, we've talked about Daisy before. She she made me realize that animal communication was the possible. Of, yeah, possible, and and my purpose here on on Earth. So, um, yeah, we're I'm an advocate for animals, and and um, yeah, I just love them to death. So, oh, and, and by and the Oh, no, for new listeners and viewers that we, we get every week, uh, just good to know a little bit about your background, even though I know. But how did you find out you can't communicate with animals? Can you share that story with us? Sure, sure. So um, Daisy, we had a parrot that um, she got sick. She was in a hospital for 30 days. And every time I'm going in the hospital, I would feel everything that she felt, whether it was... Um, flu-like symptoms, a lump in my throat. I just felt awful. And when she had passed, well, when I would visit, that's when I felt that. But when I would leave, I it would no longer be with me. So I thought it was the air quality within the hospital. So when she had passed and I went back in, I didn't feel those things anymore. And that's when I realized that there was something more to... Um, why was I not feeling this anymore? And there were some other things that had happened. Um, I could feel her presence when she wasn't there. So I contacted another animal communicator and she helped me to understand what was happening, hone in my, my, uh, my senses and my, cause they, they communicate with us through all of our senses. So I can feel what they feel, see what they see, hear what they hear. Um, and it's funny because sometimes they, they make you smell meatloaf because they love meatloaf and they, they, they correlate different things that they love. Um, and it's just up to the animal communicator to translate that to the owner. 
Um, but wow. yeah, it's that's where my my journey started, knowing that she was trying to tell me what was going on in the hospital because the vet couldn't figure it out at first. So yeah, I dedicated my life to this because there's other owners where you, all you can do is describe what's going on with your animal and what has changed in their behavior. And it's not always a direct, okay, it's their belly, it's their yeah. leg, it's their, you know, whatever it is. And an animal communicator can help with that as far as telling you what they're thinking and feeling. They can't diagnose Um but they can definitely help the vet get more laser focused on getting the diagnosis. You got it. Oh my goodness. All right. By the way, uh, remind us how we can reach you, Terry. Um, you can reach me through terrypathic.com, T-E-R-R-I-E-P-A-T-H-I-C.com or terrypathic at gmail.com. You can email me. And do you do this with just with animals or can you communicate with humans as well? Do people ask oh, you that too? Or how does that work? Funny. Um, you know, once in a while I do do humans, but I, I do stick with the animals. Um, humans do some come sometimes come through, but um, my specialty is definitely through animal communication and, and helping those that uh, are having a health issue or helping uh, owners decide whether or not it's the right time or, or what their animals' wishes are, end of life type thing. Um, and also we in... Uh, reuniting them with their their animals so Aww. yeah so um just to give you a, a story on on what um actually let me let me give you some some signs as to when an animal does pass they might be visiting you even yeah. though they're not in your body um you could see white feathers or you could uh, hear them when they're not there. Like you might hear a jingle or you might hear them knocking the food and water bowls and you look and there's nothing there. Um, it's their sign to let you know that they're visiting you. There are certain circumstances too that you might have an event yeah. that only you and them know. Uh, like for instance, uh, I had one that uh, a dog loved to play with balloons and out of the nowhere, a balloon went past the owner just as a remember a remembrance that hey, I'm still here. Aww. Uh, but only the owner would know that if the you know about the balloon. Um, they can come and visit you through other animals. They can they can take over an animal's body for a short period of time just to visit you and then um, go back into spirit. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a bunch of different, uh, they can also use um, electronics, like a flicker of a light, or they can play songs. If there were certain songs that uh, you and the animal would dance to or play in the, in the car all the time when they would um, go to the park or something like that, they could, they could play that through the radio. Um, so yeah, there's there's different signs. And sometimes when you're in the grieving situation, you might not hear them. And like there were times where when Daisy passed, I would be so upset, but my husband would notice things. And then I'd be like, man, why am I not hearing from her? But she really was, she was really trying to communicate that she was still visiting, but I was just in so much grief that I couldn't see him. So just know with time, and healing, um, because your heart, your heart yeah. hurts, but sometimes on the soul level, it hurts also. So it might hurt a little bit deeper. Than yeah. just on the surface. How do you find, you know, can an animal communicator like yourself find the reincarnated animal for someone out there? Yeah. And so what happens? Explain yeah. the process. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, can, it can come different ways. Cause I've already had where I did an animal communication about a year and a half ago for a lady who wanted to know her dog got cancer uh -huh. and wanted to know um, what their wishes were. And about within a month, the dog had crossed over. And a year and a half later, I get a message out of the blue. You need to contact my owner. 
And I had to look back because I knew the dog, but I, I couldn't recall the, the owner's name. And I, I always keep pictures of all the animal communications that I do. So just because of situations like this. So I looked back, contacted them, and I just left a message just saying, can you please call me back? It's an, I have an important message. So, and at this point, you don't know whether or not the client had asked um, or believes in reincarnation that are not. So when she called me back and like, do you re believe in reincarnation? Um, and this particular instance, she did. And I said, well, you need to contact the breeder of where you got her originally because there's a dog with a purple collar. And mm -hmm. I mean, she just, she gave me all of this information because she was trying to get through to her owner that she's back and to contact them. And she wasn't, um, she wasn't sure of, self, of herself. So sometimes what happens is animals will contact me because I did a reading on them and know that that, that, av that avenue of communication is open. So she contacted the breeder and the breeder says, you know, I heard of your situation, what happened with your, your other animal. And I put one aside with the purple collar and I was going to call you to let you know I have one for you. So not wow. only was the animal pulling on the, the heartstrings of her owner, but also the heartstrings of the breeder and connecting that and then using me as the conduit of getting the message out. So that's one search situation that has happened. And then another one. Um, I got a communication where a dog had passed in July, and so it, it's it's was probably eight eight months later, and she just wanted to find out how she was, and she was able to because sometimes what happens is there's open up there's open questions that you have about yeah the crossing over you you feel burdened because you don't know if you did the right decision, so she was hesitant on re reaching out to a communicator and she just did and I felt like I needed to do this reading before the weekend so I scheduled it and here the animal reincarnated and was going to be at an adoption event that happened that weekend gave me the white black fluffy dog in this particular area and uh, she, she was with a bunch of other different dogs and um, so yeah they they do know a lot of times where they're going to come back at and they're when they don't um when they don't they'll pull on an owner's heartstring and sometimes we don't listen to that like why yeah. would i go over here when i'm not ready or why would i do this and stop at this store um but you just got to listen to it because there are messages behind it um yeah, it's 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 really feeling your heart because that's that's where when I do animal communication, it's it's where we're connecting. When I connect with an animal, I come right, connect with the heart center. Now, does it come out sometimes where the animal has not reincarnated yet? Is there like a certain amount of time that's usual for that to happen? You know, there isn't a, a usual time. They okay. can reincarnate the next day. They can reincarnate five years from now. Daisy, when she reincarnated, um, she re it took her two and a half years to come back. Wow. So um, for the reasons that they, on their own, their their spiritual journey as to when they feel it's right within our, our lifetime, our journey here on earth, that they can re be reunited back into your life. Um, they have that sense of knowing yeah. what's right and what's wrong. Um, and what we need to heal or what time frame we need to heal before they come back and you, you can accept them. Because we do have free will. We, we could say, no, we don't want another animal because it hurts too much. I've already had that too. So they're wanting to want to come back to their owner to help you, but you have that, you have that free will to say no if you're not ready. Uh, so amazing. Uh, yeah. We're almost out of time. We have uh, two minutes left. Terry, what else do you okay. want to share about the process and about 
people that you work with and how you connect. I mean, do, does it ever bombard you or did like, I don't know if you're out of the store, do people walk past you and you feel you sense them or their animals or like how, you know, when I'm, a, when I'm out and about, I actually change my vibration because I, there's an etiquette and a, and a, um, privacy that, you know, what happens in your home happens in your home. And if, if I've reached out, even, even if you see animals that are abused, um, I don't key into them to make sure that they're okay. I will re allow the authorities to do that. Um, there's just an invasion that can happen um, that I just don't believe is, is the right thing to do. So I'll change my, my unless I'm out in a, like a preserve and I'm in the wild, I will connect to, out to the wild animals. And a lot of times, you know, turtles will come up in, in front of me or I had a, actually a coyote um, at my front door that was in a fight and had a bloody um, ear and stuff and just laid at my front door and I gave him Reiki because you can do distant Reiki through the door. So I sat there with him for a half an hour. He just stayed there and I, I just said, you know, you'll be okay. <laughs> and he just then he he slept a little bit and then left. It was pretty incredible. Um, but yeah, wild, wild animals know when you're in tune. So a lot of times they'll come and they'll pat, they'll cross your path, and I'll I'll stay in that kind of vibration. But when I go out to the store, or I go to the to a park or something like that. I I I'll. I respect their privacy. So yeah, I kind of tune it off. I and mean, I have to just for my energy too. I, I would be drained all the time. So I, I do practices, not only what I tell other people to do, but I do them myself. So um, you have to ground, you have to uh, make sure your cup is full before uh, you fill others. So um, it's just like the, that saying with the airplane and the, the mask comes down, put your mask on first and then help others. So it's, it's important for everyone to, to do that. Um, yeah. Well, sure thank you so cool. much. Well, Terry, how can we reach you if we want to uh, have a consultation or work with you? Sure. Uh, terrypathic.com, T-E-R-R-I-E-P-A-T-H-I-C.com uh, or uh, terrypathic at gmail.com. Perfect. Thank you so much. Pleasure having you here again and looking forward to the next time we connect physically, mentally, all right. virtually, all the above, telepathically, right? Right. <laughs> Energy. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Have a fantastic day. And all of our listeners, stay tuned. We'll be right back with more. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.